Hello, hello, friends. How are we doing? Let me know you're watching. Are you seeing me? Am I live on the Tailored Expressions page? I feel like it has been a whirlwind to get where I am right now, which this morning we were open in the studio for our first group of ladies. We found out that the electricity to our register was not working and so the cash box didn't open and the credit card reader didn't work and the receipt printer was not working and the internet was down and it was all just like Poof. so <laughs> I took a deep breath we got it all fixed everybody was able to get their goodies but man I feel a little bit just frenzied so whew, deep breath let me know you're here say hi I'm so excited to share with you today and I had to be a little bit careful about my the title for my live today. I wanted to give you guys all the funny little quips about stripping because that's what we're gonna talk about today. But um, I didn't wanna say Taylor's stripping in live color or something along those lines because then my video might get uh, flagged by the Facebook people and then I'd be in jail, so. Anyway, I'm so excited. Do you guys ever get so excited about something that you just, all the words just wanna spill out at the same time? <laughs> That's how I'm feeling today. So I might need to take a couple of deep breaths, but I am just super excited about what we are releasing today. And if you are tuning in today, you are going to get a sneak peek at a really cool tool that I have been developing for months and months. So I started the process back in the summer last year and we finally got that elusive shipment in and the, the tool is ready to release. So I'm gonna give you guys, my faithful watchers, a sneak peek at the tool today and then it will be available next week. So super excited about that. Hello, Peggy. Oh, hi, Debbie, watching from the hospital. Wishing your hubby a quick recovery. Hi, Deneen. Hello, Patty. Chilly in Kansas today, Deneen. It is actually really nice here today, about 40 degrees um, in Iowa, Des Moines area today. And then it's going to get to be a high of zero on Thursday with a negative 18 wind chill. So that should be fun, right? Hi, Julianne, Mary, Rita. Hi, Linda and Arlene and Sandy's here and Brenda. Awesome, awesome, let's see. <laughs> oh yes, you guys have been laughing at all of our, uh, Tracy said, I laughed so hard at your post on Sunday for today's release, yes. Um, if that one was the one on Facebook, I think uh, it was, she, or something like, I forget how it went, she's the best stripper, her technique is flawless, and uh, this week we're gonna learn how to become the best stripper that you can be. So all your friends are think that you have the most amazing stripping technique. So awesome, awesome. Let's see, Carol's here. Oh, Carol says that's cold. I will bundle up. Yes, I'll probably wear my Sherpa lined slippers at work because that's what I do when I don't have to see people. <laughs> Hi, Marsha, good to see you. And Jean's here. Hi, David. Hello, Linda. Awesome. Oh, Jamie's here. Yay. Oh, no. Everybody else has COVID exposure from various sources. That's no good, but kind of nice to work alone, actually. So, looks like Charlie's here. She says, I'm glad you got a kick out of our humor. And yes, if we left the posts entirely up to Charlie with no filter, you guys would be getting uh, <laughs> even more than what you have, even more of a laugh. So Charlie has to censor herself a few, a few times. Okay, so Heather says the tool is so awesome. She has seen it. And I feel a little bit guilty about this because I've been keeping it secret for months and months. And knowing that uh, this has been something in my arsenal, something I use on almost every card and something that I have wanted for a long time. I just wasn't super happy with um, the tools that were out there when I started in the development process. And so I'm excited to bring you something from just my desires into your craft room. And I hope it will be helpful for all of you too. 
So we're not gonna talk about that yet. Let's talk about the new products. We talked about strips, but there are also lots of other new products releasing today. So these are the 100 plus freebies that you may already have in your collection if you earned them for free during the month that they were available uh, with purchases of $100 or more. And if you did not earn them, now is your chance to purchase them. And we've also added a few extras onto those. So sometimes we'll release a stamp set and then later when we release it for purchase, we'll bring out the coordinating die set. So we've done that with a couple of the products that were previously released freebies as well. So I'm excited to show you. Let me get down in, whoa, sorry, black screen, I'm still here. I'm going to get down in front of me so you guys can see this. Yes, Heather, you saw the first prototype. I know. I wish it didn't take so stinking long to do these things, but um, there are some really important things that I, I don't know, that I find useful when I'm doing tools. I don't just think about the tool itself, but the branding of the tool, the color, what's going to make it fun and cute. So not only useful, but then I spend the time thinking about how to make it something you want to see on your desktop. Okay, Rita's excited, excited for the little envelope dies. Did you get your order placed this morning or have you guys been waiting for the live? Tell me, tell me. All right, I'm gonna start sorting out because I've got my little piles of new product and the samples that go with them. So let me tell you what, these designers totally blew it out of the park this time or knocked it out of the park blew my socks off. I got to get all of my um, phrases correct. They totally knocked it out of the park with these samples that they came up with. All of them so unique, such unique ways to use the strips. And all right, I think I've got myself all sorted out. <clears throat> so we'll start by talking about the easy strips. Here they are. Ta-da! They come in 1 8 inch, 1 quarter inch, and 1 half inch. So with the half inch, they're all the same size die. You just get a different number of strips for each die depending on the width of the strip. So with the half inch, you get four strips. With the quarter inch, you get eight strips. And with the eighth inch, you get 16 strips. So that's kind of how that all worked out. I had the designers make cards using all the three different widths so you could see the various uses for them. And the, I guess the impetus in designing these was I love to make cards out of my scraps. A lot of times I have small scraps left or you know thin scraps or something that might normally go in the garbage can quickly be run through your die cut machine to give yourself perfectly um, portioned, perfectly sized strips. So I had been doing this with my paper cutter for years. I would take a day and I would cut strips and create backgrounds to my heart's content and then you can pop a cutting plate over the top or really you can do so many different things or you can also save your strips and create backgrounds as you go. So one of the things we've already had people asking about is where is my strip storage? And you guys, I have been working on it. So you, if you see people ask or you're wondering yourself, you can help me out by sharing that strip storage is coming because one of the things that at least how I have been storing my strips and I know a couple of our designers are just kind of putting them in cups like you see here and that gets a little bit unruly, disorganized, just like those sentiment strips that we uh, came out with storage to make those more organized and usable. So I'm working on it. I won't leave you guys hanging. So let me show you one of these strips. They are, gosh, I forget how long they are, eight, seven and a half inches long. So seven and a half inches long each strip and the reason being, so if you wanted to do horizontal strips, obviously that fits. If you wanna do vertical strips, that also fits. But if you want to do diagonal strips, you wanna make sure that you can go end to end on your 
card panel, which is why they are quite a bit longer than the A2 size cardstock is for that ability to go diagonally on your card front. So let me show you, well actually I should tell you about the special. So we are offering a promotion with our easy strips. Purchase any three of the easy strips. So if you decide you want two half inch and one quarter inch, you can do it that way. Um, or if you want three of the quarter inch, just so you can run more at one time, you can do it that way. So any three easy strips and you receive our easy strip stack for free. So easy strip stack, what's that? Well, we have just some paper here in various colors from our collection that is cut and sized perfectly to run through with your strip die. So the die fits on there and you can just strip to your heart's content. <laughs> ah, cracking myself up with all the stripping. Um, but that's what you're doing. You're stripping to your heart's content. So if you're wondering about the colors in this pack, it is uh, fruit punch, guava, sweet potato, pineapple, lime zest, cilantro, confetti cake, blue raspberry, blueberry, and eggplant. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten colors, and there are 30 sheets. So you get three of each color. And this little strip stack is only available while supplies last and as a promotion when you purchase three of those easy strips. So <clears throat> let's, oh, I forgot to put that little thing back in there, but I will do that in a second. So let me show you a few of the cards that have been created with the easy strips, but really people the design team gals have been incorporating these into so many cards lately in so many unique ways. Um, these are just a few of them. And I would encourage you guys to head to the website, to the blog. Um, Heather has written the uh, blog post for the, this week and showing different projects from the design team. So if, if you're seeing something you love here, you can always travel to the blog and travel from there to the different designers and then they will have the instructions on how in the world did you make this amazing woven background, Kavya. I think it is so cool. I love it. And you can see, actually I'm not sure there's an exact rhyme or reason. Some of, sometimes she goes back and forth in every one. Sometimes she skips one and then goes over under two of them. So I just love the look of that and such a fun color combo too with the toffee and the pop of white in the background. So let's see. Oh, Amy says this could offer, offer opportunities for people doing paper quilling with the 1 8 inch size. That's true. I haven't done paper quilling, but this would cut your strips to a good size. Those 8 inch strips would probably be a good size for paper quilling. So Jill Hawkins created this adorable card. I love how she put a thin white strip in between each layer of color and love how that turned out then when she die cut the frame and placed the inside piece right back inside. So they match up, but you can see the detail of the cut lines around the outside still. And of course her signature stitching in the corner. Um, Emily Midlowski made some really clever cards. I loved how these two turned out. Of course, rainbow and this one, which I thought was really unique, how she cut the strips apart, the 1 8 inch strip, and kind of made it look like confetti in the background. On this cute one, just black and white envelopes, and you can see the background is lightly stamped with sea salt ink onto sugar cube cardstock to give it a little something extra in the background. Yes, <laughs> Charlie says you can always tell a Jill card it's either snarky and or sewn on. <laughs> so with that, we'll continue on. This one is not snarky, but it is sewn on, so you can guess that this one is Jill's. I love her color combination. It's so unique, and she started by placing this diagonal down the kind of center of her panel, and then she placed her ends of each of these strips right up against that last one in order to create this kind of 
dual direction diagonal, dual direction diagonal. Whew, that's a mouthful. But I just love how that looks and that diagonal going this way really is a place for her, provides a place for her sentiment to rest. And I think that is super cute. Melissa, I keep telling Jill she needs to do some sewing and she doesn't think it's anything special, but this is a skill that she has for sure. She's like, I just sew on my card. It's not that cool. And I'm like, Jill, it's really cool. So maybe I can keep twisting her arm and get her to come and share with us um, when she has a little bit of free time. She works during the day, so a lot of times that doesn't work, but maybe at Stamp Joy. Okay, a couple others that I wanted to show you. You guys, can you guess who made these? They look just like Heather. When I saw Heather's cards for this release, I thought, so clever. I love the sea salt cardstock paired with the sugar cube. I think it's really striking in the cardstock. You can really see the difference, but it's subtle. And she did the technique that we taught. Um, Heather and I taught a class last summer on how to make this wood plank background. And I love that it's now made easier with the strips. So you can create this panel with the white acrylic paint and our wood plank background stamp, and then you can cut it apart with the strips. So you know that your strips are going to fit perfectly together because they're all exactly the same size. Rustic equals Heather for sure. So this one, she created the panel with the strips and then cut die cut the heart. Of course, the splatters on it. That makes just such a cute little, could be a really pretty wedding card. I know a lot of people like that rustic theme for their wedding. All right, so that was easy strips. Let's talk about this one. This was our freebie with a $100 purchase in September, and it is a layering stencil and a clear stamp. So a stencil and clear combo. It has three layers of balloons that go together to create the perfect balloon, floating balloon bouquet. So that is, I think Jill made all of these, yes. These are all Jill cards. As you can tell, they are all sewn on, so that's how I know. And the color combination is so beautiful. I love how those, where those balloons overlap, like the blue and the pink, you get the, the slight purple tone there. I think they're super cute. She shows lots of different ways to use those with your strips or your on the block happy. And then Kavya did this beautiful card using the stencil and also the easy strips in the background. I love how she put the gold, the thin glitter cardstock for the thin strip in the background just to give it a little bit of extra oomph. And then she splattered on there. We have those Gonsai Tombi watercolors in pretty golds, silvers, and pearls. If you want to splatter in any of those colors, that's something we brought in recently. And I love how that looks on this card. All right, Christine says, I must not have ordered at all in September. I don't remember that one. September is our birthday month, and this is one of my favorite 100 plus freebies that we've ever done. I can see myself using this so much um, for birthday cards. It's one of the most, I guess, the occasion that I craft the most for. So then in August, I guess I'm moving backwards, this was the free stamp with purchase in August. It's a cling and clear combo. So it has those cute little envelopes with the clear stamp to fill in the hearts, has a couple sentiments, or you can fill in the envelope color as well. So that was the freebie with a $100 purchase. And to coordinate with this for this release, so this is brand new, this is the Sealed with Love cutting plate. So it is going to cut around all of those envelopes. We did only design the die to cut around the whole envelopes. So you don't need, you don't have a bunch of leftover half envelopes. So that was my intent with making it kind of cut off the edges of that background stamp, just because we don't, I don't, couldn't really see a purpose for half envelopes. Um, so we made the die a little bit smaller and 
then um, coordinated still with that background. So let me show you a couple of things with that. We've got this one that Jill made, really cute with that grid background and the envelopes cascading down. And speaking of cascading, Emily did the rainbow here with the cascading rainbow of envelopes and a note to say hello. So super cute things you can do with these envelopes. And I think that die is going to add a lot of versatility to the Cling and Clear stamp now that you can easily cut those out and really place them wherever you want to on your card project. So that one is called Sealed with Love. Next up, I did, I did August, September, October. This was our October freebie. It's called Winter Village. I got to looking at it and thinking it really doesn't look too wintry. It looks a little bit like a neighborhood with some large uh, fir trees. And so I love how Jill made this into a welcome to the neighborhood card so it doesn't have to be winter or Christmas. I love her color combination. The blue corn, sweet basil, and cupcake is kind of unique. So that one is the Winter Village background stamp. And I should also say, if I turn this over, you guys can see that this background stamp is a little bit larger than our typical backgrounds in the length. And that is because we wanted to make it long enough to fit on a mini slim card as well. So this is something that will work on an A2 and mini slim, that Winter Village background. Okay, next up, we have some beautiful samples for this one. This is Bold Branches. I guess I'm working backwards again. I should have had these all in order, but this was our July freebie. So with purchases of 100 or more in July, you receive the Bold Branches, which is a clear stamp set. And then now this is brand new. So we're releasing the die set that coordinates with those uh, leafy images. So some really fun little sentiments. I mean, I guess fun maybe isn't the right word for a with sympathy sentiment, but very useful sentiments. Miss you, love you, get well, thanks, hello. Um, really versatile set there. So let's see some of what the design team has created. This beauty is from Kavya. I'm sure you're not surprised. She's got her little gold kind of lines and dots throughout the images that she stamped and colored. And I love how she added those thinner branches. This one here, embossed those in gold, die cut them and added them behind. And then of course with the watercolor splatters in gold, it really just makes it so, it makes it pop. It's really bright and vibrant. I wish you all could hold these in person and touch them and see them. You gotta come to the studio someday. If you can make it here, I guarantee you're gonna be wowed by the samples in person. Every time I get the mail and we get new cards, I'm always drooling like, it's like I'm a kid on Christmas. I get Christmas every week when the design team sends me cards. Okay, so this is another one. Melody created this one and she used a little bit of everything. So she got the bold branches in there along with the um, easy strips, the half inch easy strips. And she placed them down first and then die cut them with the scalloped die, which makes it look like a seamless piece, even though those are all kind of adhered together separately. So I love her kind of ferns in those greens and pretty minty colors. So she did a mini slim card as well. And Melody always does something on the inside of her cards. I should mention that. And last we have Heather's card. Heather, this is a work of art. I love it. Again, she used that wood planking that she did on her other two projects that I already shared with you guys. But I'm guessing, Heather, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm guessing that she blended these leaves, which I love. It's a simple way to get a lot of pieces without actually coloring all of them. Um, so I'm guessing they are die cut. Oh, it looks like they were stamped onto, yes, they're stamped onto maybe avocado cardstock and then blended over the top. Is that right, Heather? 
avocado cardstock blended over the top and then she popped up some of them to give it a more dimensional look. So you can see how it has dimension with only some of the leaves popped up and some of them adhere directly to the background. I love it. Aren't they? Amy says, seriously, amazing creators. I love them. Okay, and the last freebie was from November. And that is this beautiful flourishing frame cutting plate. These two samples are from, well, I guess I got to pull out this one too because Heather used it on this project. So these two in the bright color combo are from Emily and she used the easy strips to set off the cutting plate, which is a really easy way to use your cutting plates. Um, I know Noriko did a really cute one that had our Celebrate You cutting plate put over the top of a strip background. It turned out amazing. This one you can see is set into. So actually if I peel this back, you can see there's a solid layer behind and she just placed that die cut piece right into the spot there to give it some added dimension. So it's not completely adhered down. You get these little parts that kind of pop up out of the card. I think that's a really cool use. And then those easy strips, you could do that in, you could even make that an anniversary card and do it, or I mean a wedding card and do it in uh, the wedding colors. It would be really pretty. And then this one from Heather. This looks to be blended around the outside and then she placed a plain white frame on the inside so that you got that kind of just variation in color between the stark white and then the leafy branches around the outside. Love them. <laughs> Beth, uh, I'm embarrassed to say I have everything except the strip dies. Charlie, I echo Charlie's sentiment, no shame in that. So the strip dies are brand new to our online audience unless you were at our Stamp Joy event, they were an exclusive at our Stamp Joy, available for those attending on uh, at our fall event, and now available for everyone. Okay, I think I made it through all the samples. Is everybody here? Oh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Jean says I ordered the strips this morning and just got noticed that they shipped. So should we do some crafting, some creating together? I know I gave you that teaser of the tool that I want to show you. So keep watching because it's going to be here soon. Okay, I wanted to show you guys a different way to think about the strips. So like I said, you can adhere them horizontally. You can adhere them vertically. You can adhere them diagonally, but you can also create a ton of unique patterns like I told you Jill placed down her strip through the middle and then built outward from there to create the dual direction diagonal I think I'm gonna coin that term the dual direction diagonal um, I wanted to do something a little bit I guess more geometric because it's not at a diagonal but I want to show you guys how you can create something like this where you have the patterns in their own quadrants. My idea with this was sort of like a rainbow, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. I left out purple, yes I did. Um, but these are a lot of the colors that are in that strip stack. If you purchase the, the three strips, then you would get that, a lot of these colors in the strip stack that I'm using here. So how do we start building this background? Well, the first step, I like to build my backgrounds on a piece of typing paper. And I get a lot of questions about why take the step of doing that. And it's not a step that you have to do, but a lot of times I'm building backgrounds that I don't necessarily know what I want to do with. So if I decide I want to use a die to cut it out or um, I want to use my paper trimmer to cut it apart. It is a lot easier to die cut or to cut with a trimmer if you have it on a thinner piece of paper and not on a piece of cardstock and then on a piece of 
a sticky sheet, and then more cardstock on the top. So that's why I build on a piece of typing paper, just regular old computer paper, very uh, thin. I think it's like a 20, 20 pound text weight. And then I mentioned our Tailored Expression sticky sheets. So if you are getting the easy strips, then sticky sheets are a must have for your cart. These are already sized at four and a quarter by five and a half, so A2 card size. And this is what is, makes it super simple to build these backgrounds without having to put adhesive on the back of every strip. So you just place this full sheet down onto your typing paper and then you're able to easily add those strips quickly without having to use an additional adhesive like a tape runner or a liquid glue. Now before we get started on this particular design, we need to do some measuring. And I know that's not everybody's favorite thing, so I did some measuring ahead of time and I'm gonna share with you guys. What we want to do essentially is find the middle point of our cardstock so that we can start building this pattern out from the center. That's how we know we're gonna get it perfectly centered and all of our blocks are gonna be the same size. So, oh, Noriko's here, hello! Hi, hi. Okay, um, it's a, Noriko, it's a Shazam party. No, it's a Bubam party. We're not doing any Shazamming today with Noriko here. Okay, so we are going to start by measuring and I need to find the midway point between the top and the side. I've got my trusty ruler here and you guys bear with me and my public math. I did do this earlier, so I already uh, used my calculator where I needed to, but this, like I said, is four and a quarter by five and a half. So half of four and a quarter is two and one eighth. So I'm gonna place my ruler up there at the top and I'm gonna mark two and one eighth. And then I'm gonna do the same thing down here at the bottom. It is important that your ruler is straight across, of course, two and one eighth. Then we're gonna turn it this way. This is five and a half. So halfway is going to be two and three quarters. So we'll just mark that out and then I'm gonna mark it at the bottom as well. Maybe what I need to do is create some printed pieces. That would be, okay, I'm coming up with an idea right here on the live. So we could print in a light gray so you would have the lines already where you need them and we could do diagonal pattern like Jill's. So all you need to do with your easy strips is fill it in. Is that something you guys would be interested in? So you don't have to do the measuring. It's already done and printed for you. You just get to put the pattern together with whatever colors you want. You could come up with lots of different ways to build the pattern. I think that sounds like fun. So if you want to take a screenshot, here is the measurements of this piece. So two and one eighth in from each of the shorter ends and two and three quarter on the long ends. So take a screenshot of that if you want to remember that later. Now what we're going to do is take our ruler and actually connect these lines. So I like to have my paper straight on here. It just helps me uh, make sure that I'm doing this right. So we've got that mark on each end and I'm just gonna run my pen along the ruler just like that and we'll do this end as well. So here we have our four quadrants and we have our perfect center. So now the great thing about the sticky sheet is you're going to be able to see through once we put the sticky sheet on. So I'm going to peel this off. I start up in the corner and kind of fold down a triangle of the backer sheet. And then we're going to place it up in the corner here and kind of Hold that down so as long as I know that one corner is perfect then I can pull this backer sheet and let it fall into place without creating any bubbles on my cardstock or my typing paper piece. All right now we need to peel off that other layer so the top layer to reveal the 
sticky all over. <laughs> oh, good. You guys like my pre-printed idea to help with patterning your strips. I think that would be so fun. I'm excited to come up with some different options for that. So this is obviously one of them. All right. Now you don't have to peel the whole thing off. Sometimes I like to work in smaller areas so I'm not getting my fingers all sticky everywhere. We're gonna start up here at the top with, I'm gonna do, this is fruit punch and, um, not strawberry milkshake, uh, pink champagne. So I'm gonna do the guava and pink champagne this time. So I'm just lining up that strip, going in the vertical direction and then we'll work out from the center. Always start in the center and work outwards. So the other thing I would like to mention is if you cut your strips from a piece of cardstock that's smaller than the strip, one end is not gonna be perfectly cut and it's pretty easy to tell which end is the perfect one. You can see this end is kind of has rounded edges and this one is very straight. You can also feel it when it's been die cut. But what you want to do is make sure that that rough end is hanging off of your piece. So you get that perfectly straight edge as you're lining up these strips all the way down. And I kind of, as I line it up, I sort of push it into the strip right before it. I made that look easy. <laughs> oh, yes, Charlie's right. I may have done it once or twice before. That's true. And I think one of the things that, um, actually that I think Susan has taught me is to really think about why I do something a certain way. Um, she's always thinking about that. Like, well, why do I do that or you know something that just comes naturally to me like pulling the strips into each other might be something that wouldn't come naturally to someone else so thinking about what am I actually doing with each step and is it the best and easiest way to do it all right so here we go we've got one quadrant finished now we're going to take and go in the opposite direction with the next two colors. So I'm starting with the pineapple and candy corn. You guys out there, have I talked too much, talked you to boredom? Trying to think about, have we started our Valentine's yet? I have not, well, no, I did. I went to the candy section at Target. That's one of my favorite, the Valentine candy section, one of my favorite things to do. And I didn't buy anything. And then I thought, what is wrong with me? But I was in a day, in a mood where I was like, I should probably say no. Anybody else have those moods? And then you think, why do I care? <laughs> why did I tell myself not to buy that? Not to eat that? All right. Almost there. <laughs> yes, it is kind of a soothing process, Amy, to lay all the strips down. And you can get really pretty intricate or you can keep it simple. Now we're going with the confetti cake again on the vertical with lime zest. I hope our two o'clock people in the studio are late today because I am not moving very fast. I talk too much about all the cool stuff. I'm going to remind you guys of this in the end of the video too, but I better say it now so I don't forget. And then all of you who are here can help remind 
anyone who might have a question in the future. Um, starting next week, I am going to be changing the time of my live video on Tuesdays to 10 a.m. So that will mean both of the live videos for TE on Tuesday and Thursday are at 10 a.m. Central Time. So we are actually going to be opening our studio um, without an appointment for the first time. And so it doesn't make sense for me to close the studio so that I can go live. So we're gonna go live at 10 o'clock and hopefully that will help too because I know a lot of you like to wait and see what I'm going to do before you place your orders online. And so that will be closer to our actual release time of 9 a.m. And of course, if that time doesn't work for you, you can always watch the replay. Hello, Michelle in Kentucky. All right. <clears throat> we are trying to make some preparations for our new studio space. So if you haven't been on when I have mentioned that we are in the process of building a brand new building here in our hometown of Ankeny. Uh, we're bringing all of our different, I guess, parts of Tailored Expressions. Right now we have stamp manufacturing and a print shop and they're all in these different places and we are um, really excited to be building so that we can bring everybody under one roof, which also means a new and improved and larger studio space. So we're trying to make some changes in preparation for getting everybody excited about coming to the studio when we open. We'll be open more often, more hours, more events. And yeah, that's kind of the reason for the change or the reason why we're hoping to expand our studio offerings before we get into our new building and the reason why we're going to stop requiring appointments so everybody can just stop in and do a make and take and have fun. All right, so that looks kind of crazy, huh? Yes. All right. So we, I need a scissors. This is kind of a fun step. You get to cut off all the fringes just like that. I try to cut right up against that piece of typing paper. Sometimes there's a little bit of adhesive hanging over the sides. You can see they all kind of want to stick together. It's easy to separate those once you go to kind of put them away or use them again. All right, I better get moving past this step because we, I guess you kind of already saw the end result of what we're trying to do with this project. And I want to show you my tool. So ready for the sneak peek. Drum roll, please. I'm the only one here, so I'm drum rolling for myself. <laughs> oh, you guys, my sense of humor. All right. Um, hold just a second. Okay, anybody recognize this guy? What's this? <laughs> this is a powder tool. And this is something that has been in my craft room for a while. I have been using this powder tool because I didn't prefer the one that's like a bag that you pat onto your um, cardstock because I just felt like it was getting on my fingers and I didn't like that. And so I started using this one because it was the only thing available at the time for many, many years. And I told you guys that I always, what do, does anybody remember what I call this up at the top? I call this troll hair. And inevitably the troll hair at the top either falls back in or 
it gets broken off or I don't know, but I usually am pretty like, I guess I'm hard on my powder tool because I want to make sure the powder is actually coming out of it and getting onto my project. And that means that I'm getting some troll hair up here and I'm not always getting the desired effect. So I started to think about what do I want in a powder tool that is different from what this provides me. And it really centered around the application. So I wanted something that would easily apply the powder to my paper that I would not have to wonder is the powder on there. I wouldn't have to try super hard or bang on my cardstock to get it to come out. And so I started the process of looking into what we could do for a better embossing tool, a powder tool. And so this is my new anti-static powder tool. Let me open up this cute little box and show you what lives inside. Of course it's teal, you guys. That is my favorite color, our company color. It's a really nice calming um, color and I think it will look great on any craft desk. It has the Tailored Expression Share Joy logo on the top. And now let's open it up and look inside. Here is the applicator for the powder tool. It is a soft, it's not really a foam. Um, it's almost like a, a little bit of a soft fabric, but you can pound, well, I'm doing it on my hand, but let me grab my cardstock here because we're going to emboss this sentiment together so you guys can see the powder tool in action. So I have the black cardstock here and the sending love sentiment all set up in the misty. And the first thing you want to do before you emboss is condition your cardstock with your powder tool. So there you can see I just did a light pounce across the surface. You can also take and actually just wipe across the surface instead of pounce. Um, either way will work, but you can see the powder on your paper and it didn't take a whole lot of force or effort. There was no banging, um, none of those frustrating things. So I tested a lot of different powders. This is the powder that I found to work best to dispel any of the static and make sure that our embossing powder only sticks where we want it to. So now we're gonna ink up that stamp. Do I know if the powder has to be white? Um, I don't know if it has to be white. I would say most of my embossing is done on white cardstock, even though right now we're doing it on a darker cardstock. Um, most of my embossed sentiments happen on white cardstock. So if you had a dark powder, that might not be as conducive to that. But I'm going to show you how to buff the cardstock to get any residue left over after we've done our embossing here. So the great part is that the powder comes off of the cardstock just as easily as it goes on. So there we go. Perfect. I'm gonna tap it one more time here and then we'll heat that. I guess I could I could check on that candy. That's an interesting thought. And then you just have to have two powder tools, one with your dark powder in it and one with your light powder. Uh, Karen's asking, did I miss this in what's new? You did not. You are getting a an early sneak peek. So this will be released next week. It will be released on Thursday, just in time for those of you who are attending Stamp Joy. Thursday is the start of your discount period. So if you are attending Stamp Joy, then we'll be sending out that supply list soon and you'll be able to order the powder tools at that time as well. Uh, here I did my clean cloth. Um, candy, I'm not gonna answer the how much yet, um, but I think it's very affordable. Christine's asking, is the new tool refillable? It sure is. So right here in the middle, this is where the um, cap comes off and you can refill with powder. 
And then, let me see. I guess I should mention also, so when you, if you purchase a tool, when you first get it, there is a cap inside of here. You only need to remove it one time and throw it away. That's just an extra protection to keep the powder inside the tool. I know that um, these are coming from overseas. They sit on a boat for a long time, and so they wanted an extra precaution just to make sure we didn't have any accidents. So there is a little cap on the inside of the tool that you'll need to remove before you try to use it for the first time. And just throw that away, screw on the lid, and then it's ready to use. So you'll want to pounce it a few times to get the product to start coming out of this top portion here. And then I was gonna show you. So I've got my clean microfiber cloth that I can just buff over the top of this piece of cardstock. And you wanna make sure that it's clean because you don't want to wipe your dirty stamp cleaner on your cardstock. But that gets off all of the residue and brings back the really uh, crisp black. So, all right, now, Let's die cut it. I think I answered all the questions. Did I miss it? Did I miss it? I don't know. Okay, I think I got all the questions. Can you add a reminder so I remember to use it? <laughs> yes. Um, okay, somebody asked if we'll, we'll sell the refill. We won't be selling the refill right off. There is a lot of powder in here, and quite honestly, I've been using my tools like this for many years, um, and if you have this tool, I really do actually like the powder that's in here. I, don't, I didn't test this powder to make sure that it was the same as ours. I tested many powders and came up with my favorite for our tool, but I wouldn't throw this away. Um, if you have one of these tools, you can save this powder and just put it in a different vessel if and when yours runs out. But we will be selling the refill um, in the future. It just won't be available right away because I really don't see that anyone will be running out of the powder for quite some time. So, okay, let's see here. We've got my die cut machine and we have seven minutes, you guys. So this stamp I didn't mention is from the uh, Sending Hugs stamp set that came out with our Valentine's release. And I love it. I think it goes so well. This particular sentiment goes really well with the envelopes. So, sending love and the envelopes have a little heart on them. And so it just seems like it was meant to be. So here's that, that. Now, since I do have a little bit more time, let me finish this step and I will talk you guys through what to do. So here's this piece that you have finished and it should measure four and a quarter by five and a half, but you'll see that it leaves like an odd size strip here on the two vertical sides. And so all you need to do is take your, well, there's a couple things you can do. So you could take a die and line it up just perfectly where it goes. And then you could die cut it because you've put it on that thin paper. You can die cut that easily in whatever shape that you want. Or if you just wanna cut that off, you can use your trimmer, which I love this trimmer I've mentioned before because it has that see if I can bring it up here. It has that thin wire in, oh, okay, you can hear me playing the guitar, but it's hard to see. There's a very thin wire, and then when you set that onto your cardstock, you can see exactly where your blade is going to cut. Okay, I gotta move my fingernails away from the camera. I didn't have time to go get my nails done, and they're so bad, they're so grown out. Forgive me today. I will have them done by next week. Okay, so I got that one little strip off. Now we'll do this side. And I want it to be four and a quarter. 
or four by five and a quarter. So this is four. Now I am going to cut off the remainder of this strip. So that's what I'm going to use to line up my wire and cut one strip off in this direction to give me an equal sized piece just like that. Uh, let's see, Brenda's asking, what day do the new lives at 10 start? So that will be next week on Tuesday. I will be live at 10 a.m. Um, and then before then, Heather will be live 10 a.m. on Thursday this week. And then I believe Susan has Thursday next week. So we're gonna switch all the lives to 10 o'clock Hopefully, maybe make it easier for you to remember that we're here, 10 o'clock uh, live on Tuesday and Thursday starting next week. So um, I hope you'll tune in for Heather's live on Thursday. I know she's got some fun things planned with one of the items from our Valentine release, and she's going to show you how to use it for occasions other than Valentine's Day, which I'm really excited about. I know we talked a little bit about how love can be expressed throughout the year. Hearts are great for not just Valentine's Day, but weddings, anniversaries, um, sending love all throughout the year. So let's see if anybody had any questions. Uh, Candy asked if the blades on the, the trimmer stay sharp. So I haven't changed mine yet. I've had it for probably three weeks and I do a pretty good amount of cutting with it. Um, but we do sell the replacement blades as well. So if you're going to invest in that trimmer, maybe grab a set of blades as well so you don't catch yourself without um, the replacement blades. So looks like you guys are all talking about how I should do red nails. That sounds good for Valentine's Day. I don't do red very often, but I think that would be fun with little white hearts on it or something. All right, thank you guys for tuning in today, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back here Thursday at 10 a.m. for Heather's Live. Otherwise, I will see you next week, Tuesday, 10 o'clock. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.